no idea whether our next guest is here or not. Just like she is. How could I have doubted her? Ladies and gentlemen, wonderful, wonderful, from the voluptuous horror of Karen Black, Angela. wonderful pyramid celebration. I want to take a, a piece of paper out because I wrote some names down of some friends that I really miss from the pyramid time. And I just wanted to um, give a shout out to Richard Hoffman, who was a great painter and performer and did many of the first early performances at the pyramid, made costumes that were incredible. Gordon Kearney, who was the person that I did my um, very first performance art piece with at the Pyramid in the early 80s. Um, Huck Snyder. Yeah. I, I think I'll hear enough about Huck Snyder's work these days. He was a wonderful painter and a, just an incredible artist. And Bobby Bradley, of course, who we've been hearing about during these performances. This, this performance series, and um, I remember how we used to book um, our nights at the Pyramid, and Kastutis Naka said on the first night here, um, Kastutis spoke about what it was like to book a show with Bobby Bradley, <laughs> and for me, I was about only a couple of years younger than the main divas of the pyramid, but at that time I felt like it was a huge age difference and that they were fully developed as artists and I was in awe of everyone that did work there. Um, of course they were fully developed, people like Ethel Eichelberger, <laughs> and Tanya Ransom, and Samoa, and the people that essentially informed a kind of performance art that hadn't really been historicized, that's an art word, until the last few years with the help of Hattie and, and with the help of galleries like this gallery who gave and who've been giving this group of performers the kind of um, uh, recognition that they need and deserve as fine artists. You know? and, and, and back in the early 80s, when we talked about performance art, it was only Lori Anderson, who's wonderful, or Chris Burden, or just a hand, or Carolee Schneeman, and just a handful of people that were always associated with one kind of performance. So um, when Bobby Bradley came into the picture, and Hattie and everyone at the Pyramid, it was um, a very open-minded curation process. Um, and now when people ask me, how do you become a performance artist or how do you do artwork in New York, um, a kind of paradigm was established back then, which is book a date, make the poster, and figure it out later. <laughs> Um, now, if I, you know, would share with other people who want to know how to do something, it's basically you need to show up. And unfortunately, there's not people like Bobby Bradley around that much any longer. And if I would have thought at the time that there wouldn't be another person like Bobby Bradley, or that he would be like a curatorial anomaly, because he was so special with how he book shows at the pyramid, I would have been very sad, you know. But at the time it just seemed normal. You would go at around five in the afternoon or six in the afternoon and ask if you could do a show. And I, you know, usually I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing for like at least ten years. And he would say, he would say sure, Friday night, you're booked, do a performance. And um, so that's what happened. And I'm very grateful to the um, Pyramid um, Nightclub. It 
I was going to SBA in the early 80s, and I dropped out because um, the pyramid was a better education. <laughs> Show one song, one picture at a time. Yeah.